Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship. Thank you for joining us. We are virtual only. We're based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. The phone number works. If you'd like to contact us, we do the philosophy of eschatology. Not what you see on the surface, not the news reports, things like that. I leave that up to John Haller. He does a better job than I feel like doing. So what you need to know, your reality, our existence, we solve a little piece of revelation. And what are we trying to solve this week? Well, we're really solving the sixth seal and kind of the fourth bowl, and kind of a lot of things, and the fourth seal for that matter too, the fourth horseman. So it'll be very interesting. We're going to be connecting the dots, so stick with us. It'll be exciting. Once again, I am a part of the Prophecy Roundtable every Thursday night at 7 o'clock Central with Doug Hamp and Scott Harwell. It's a fun show. I really enjoy it. It, it is helping me to, I don't know, it's, it's kind of helping me to work better with other people in terms of eschatology, because I have been kind of a loner for years. The Deagle Report, it came out in 2014. It predicted a quarter of the world's population dies or better. Uh, it predicted a 70% loss in the United States. We need to discuss why the Deagle Report was so interesting. So once again, 70.2% of the U.S. population would be reduced by 2025. And you have to ask yourself, why? What, what are they talking about? What's what's going on here, Deagle Report? How would you know that in 2014? We're going to connect the dots. We'll do the thought behind the thought, the philosophy of the end of days. We're looking at the Deagle Report. We're looking at the Bible. We're looking at the news. And we're trying to show you that this actually makes sense by 2025 based on lots of things. So in, in public conversations now, people are chatting about the apocalypse more and more and more. It's becoming mainstream. This is from John Haller. As I mentioned, he's my favorite source for just all sorts of news about the end times. Um, he's the best researcher out there, and he doesn't give you his opinions and his biases. He just reports. Um, but why would people be talking about it now? What's going on that's different? And why is that young lady off to the right-hand side there? She's wearing a black mohair sweater. Why would I cite that? Well, what's so important about having her involved with the end times? Yeah, we're getting there. Okay, so once again, there she is. And she's in the midst of the sun going from white, or rather from yellow to white to red to black. And when it turns to a black mohair um, uh, a micronova of the sun, and that syncs up with the red blood moon eclipse sometime probably in 2025, like the Deagle people are seeing, you're going to have a, a, an ice age, a stone age type of an event, okay? And Deagle seems to know that the micronova will hit in 2025. So let's talk about Deagle again. Most of the people, when you cite the Deagle report, are going to say, oh, it's World War III, it's World War III. Haller is talking about that. Uh, Michael Snyder, another respected name in eschatology, is saying, oh, it's absolutely World War III. You know, you can't prove me otherwise. Well, I'm telling you, it's going to be societal collapse. And that's what's going to give you this horrific reduction in population. So Deagle 2025 forecast shows America and Israel lose World War III. No, no, it's not World War III, people. So, But that's the general opinion. It's just easy to do the knee-jerk and say, World War III, there you go. No, that's going to hold off until probably 2032, 2033. So the United States, according to Deagle, is 327 million. They will drop to 100 million. That's Deagle, okay? That sounds like the fourth horseman, okay? It's a higher number, but you'll find that certain civilizations will not reduce as much because... If they are bombed back into the Stone Age by a micronova, they're going to look around and say, we already were in the Stone Age, so what's the difference? Okay, so the Fourth Horseman will affect certain more modern civilizations. They will they will not be able to know how to find an animal, kill it, clean it, cook it, and eat it. They just won't figure it out. They, they, they will die. Okay, Germany. Germany's got problems. Lots of problems, like politician licking public toilets and smearing feces all over his face and part of his punishment, you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, so Germany's population, 81 million people. They'll go down to 28 million. Okay, interesting. Here's a, a repost from the Wayback Machine of 2014 when the Deagle Report came out. And uh, it's from the expose, who I don't cite very often because I'm sure that the analytics don't like the expose. The Eagle predicted in 2020 the United Kingdom would see its population decline by 77.1%. 
by the year 2025. Well, that would be societal collapse. That would not be World War III. Wayback Machine, again, predicted through through Deagle, okay, that the United States would lose 68.5% by the year 2025, okay? Uh, Germany, again, 65.1% by 2025. Deagle predicted Australia would see the population decline by 34.6% by the year 2025. So it lists all these things out, and you just need to go through the Wayback Machine to figure it out. So you can you can find this report. It's the Deagle report, okay? And so Ben Davidson has been kind of my hero in helping me to see the physics of a micronova. And I have discovered the mohair micronova in Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. But Ben's been very helpful in getting this done. He really discovered the modern possibility of a micronova and what it would look like and how what the physics are, okay? So there's that young lady again with the micronova. She's going to be in a lot of pictures. There she is again. Once again, the sinking. So what I'm telling you is coming along here is more thunderstorms, more horrible things. So it'll be an end times horror story of the weather, okay? Our spate of auroras may seem beautiful, but they belie a progressively thinning magnetosphere that permits more and more of the sun's solar energy UV, say, and, and really uh, the Bible describes it as falling on us, okay? The UV and the micronova falling on us to enter our atmosphere at poles, causing sudden violent electric wind and tornadic storms, usually about a week later, and then restarting earthquakes and swarms, say, California and uh, Campi Filegri, uh, in Italy, uh, about two weeks later, usually, okay? The eerie part of the horror story is that the timeline between the solar storms entering our atmosphere and the results from electric storms and earthquakes has been shortened from weeks to days recently. It's happening faster. Eventually, the increased solar energy will open our ozone layer like a megillah. That is how it describes it in the Bible, a smaller scroll, causing the poles to flip, while dust from the galactic current sheet will accumulate on the sun like a like sackcloth made of mohair. There it is. That's tricon, trichonos in the Greek. This event will be co a coinciding blood moon eclipse with a mohair solar micronova that will force kings and slaves, everyone, underground. It will be the sixth seal. There are nine of these two, but Deagle is pointing to 2025. Let's see if they figured it out. So once again... I'm saying the Deagle is pointing to 2025, so you'll see the D after two of these. That's 314 of 2025, which is Purim of 2025. And then the Lul 15, 1415 is 97 of 25. They're pointing to those. And, and, and those are the Deagle uh, blood moon eclipses that would match up with the Sixth Seal and that Micronova. And they're predicting societal collapse after that, after whenever that occurs in 2025. So, what they're basically predicting to Deagle and Ben in part is, then I watched as he broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. That is a micronova unlocking the crust, and the mantle breaks free. The sun turned black. It's not an eclipse. It's the final stage of micronova as sacklos, sackcloth, or sac sacos tr trichinos, which is that sackcloth with that layered goat's shiny mohair. It's angora, basically, worn in the mor in mourning, uh, so th there's sadness. And the full moon became blood red. That, once again, is Adar 14, March 14th of 2025. The stars fell from heaven. That could actually be the satellites, too. Elon Musk might have things falling. That's why he doesn't really care if he loses satellites. He's learning how to put more of them into the sky each day. So if they fall down on the sometime in 2025, it'll just pop some more up there. Okay. Uh, so this would be a if they if they fall to Earth, that would be a micro nova dust accumulation event plus satellite fa satellites falling. Just as a fig tree drops its bitter winter timing, that's what I'm saying. It'll be a winter time type of a thing. So that's why March is more tempting because the middle of the summer there uh, doesn't make sense in 2025. Uh, so winter timing seems to make sense. The figures, figs, when shaken by a strong wind. And once again, the sun would go from yellow to white. It's already white, people. It's already white. To red to black. So when you see it go from red to black, boom, we're going into micronova. And according to Deagle, it makes sense in 2025. So if you're going to see that occur, that means that the industrialists, the elites, people like that would know this is coming and they would start to stockpile copper. So copper would go to, say, $40,000 per ton. And it's going there.
according to this guy. So his name is Underand, and um, he's predicting it as of May 24th of 2024, which is pretty close to the day. He's saying, absolutely, it's going to hit 40,000. So there's a copy sh copper shortage right now. And if we have this Micronova hit, you'll need copper to rebuild, and they'll want to rebuild because we won't want to be in the Stone Age, age for long. And it looks like, biblically speaking, we won't be in the Stone Age long, okay? But once again, there will be a second Micronova, a full one, in probably six years after the first one, okay? So the globalists are hoping to combine the sixth seal with the fourth seal anyway. Uh, this is a horrible, sick pig of a man named Bill McGuire. Uh, if I am brutally honest, the only realistic way I see emissions falling as fast as they need to to avoid catastrophic climate breakdown is the culling of the human population by a pandemic with a very high fatali fatality rate. So he's pretty excited about that. And so I suggest culling the human population with a deadly pandemic to solve the climate crisis. Okay, That's May, uh, May 13th of 2024. Uh, cited in the G Gateway Pundit, and that was X, of, of course, on the side there. But I argue this, that if you survey the world stage and you are unsure which side you're on, you're on the one being called. Okay? So his book is Hot House Earth, and he is the type of guy that says, in 27 years' time, I'm saying it starts in 2025. If Deagle is correct, it starts in 2025. Society as we know it will have collapsed. And that's really what would occur after a micronova. Society will collapse. Food will become extremely limited. Logistics will fail. Lawlessness will have taken over the land. Gangs will roam the countryside, scavenging for resources like food, water, and fuel. Check out Gaza. That's what's going on right now. Gangs scavenging. This breakdown won't be sudden. It will happen over a period of months. No, it'll happen over a period of days if this happens from a micronova. It might have already begun. No, it's 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 due when the Micronova hits. Okay, so this is another wonderful man named Dennis Meadows, and he thinks that we have too many billions of people right now. We're at seven billion, say eight billion. We have to get back down to say five hundred million. The planet can only support like a billion people or less. So five hundred million would be perfect for him. That's Dennis Moore limits the limits to growth, and he is a pig of a man. And he doesn't care about people at all. He only cares about himself. And he calls it, we love Earth, but he doesn't love people. Okay, here's another man that doesn't really love people. His name is Rod, Robert Redfield from the CDC. And the Wine Press Christian uh, publication is publishing this. I think bird flu is going to be the cause of the great pandemic, where they're teaching these viruses to be more infectious to humans. So thank you, Robert Redfield. That's the real threat. That's the real biosecurity threat that these university labs are doing bio experiments that are intentionally modifying viruses. And I think bird flu is going to be the cause of the great pandemic while they're teaching these viruses to be more infectious for humans. Yeah, I think we have to recognize, I've always said that, I think the blankety blank um, pandemic was a wake up call. I don't believe that it's the great pandemic. There will be a greater one, he says. Well, there, there could be. Um, and so he'll see a mortality of the 10 to 50% range. Going to be trouble. Okay. Uh, this is Strauss and Howe. I'm a supporter of Strauss. I'm not a fan of Neil Howe at all. Um, the middle section here, starting in the orange, sometime before the year 2025. Did I say that right? 2025. America will pass through a great gate in history, commensurate with the American Revolution, Civil War, twin emergencies, of the Great Depression and World War II, and the risk of catastrophe will be very high. The nation will erupt into insurrection or civil violence, crack up geographically, or succumb to authoritarian rule. So that's Strauss and Howe. Um, now, I can also cite Martin Armstrong, peak death of 2026, Charles Nenner, peak death of 2026. They're both, uh, they're more like actuarials, and they've been figuring out when the crisis or the crises will occur. And many people point to 2025 and 2026 as when it'll start. Their computer models prove that. Here's another actuarial. His name is Edward Dowd on workers' deaths. And so a quick look at the overall casualties from the Jibby Jabber reveal an unparalleled medical disaster. Dowd explains, I went before Senator Ron Johnson in February to talk about the 
whatever scorecard, which is abysmal. Ever since the Jibby Jabber came on, we have had 1.1 million Americans die excessively, 4 million permanently disabled, and another 28 million injured. It's 33 million people who have been negatively affected now. And once again, he's looking at something like a peak death in 2026. And that would be close. That's that window of that lady in the black and gore sweater. So continuing on with that, Dowd he was on USA Watchdog with Greg Hunter. In 2022 alone, Dowd figured 30% of the workforce had been killed, disabled, or could not work, or working chronically ill. Dowd said death and disability trends for 2023 is way up. Thousands every day are reporting they are getting sick, and uh, supply chains and society are going to grind to a crawl. Everything's slowing down or breaking down. Uh, you're being gaslit. You're told that everything is fine. It's not so good. So that's Greg Hunter and Ed Dowd. Births are dropping in 2023, ending pandemic baby boom. This is Axios, and this is a fairly current article. I'm sorry I didn't date it from Ivana Sarek. Why it matters, drop-in births helped plunge the U.S. fertility rate to the lowest point in nearly a century. 3.6 million babies were born in the U.S. last year, 2% drop from 2022. The U.S. fertility rate in 2023 amounted to 1.62 births per woman, well below the replacement rate of 2.1. Well, we've been at that for years, but it's going to get much worse. So this is an interesting prophetic look at this. This is from the Essenes. They're saying 2025 starts the final age of man. This is coming from Tom Horn, who's now deceased, John, Josh Peck, who works for Prophecy Watchers out of Oklahoma, and Ken Johnson, uh, who are the people that have been doing the most research on the Jubilee calendar, calendar, or rather the Essene calendar, but the Jubilee year. And so they're all looking at 2075, as a jubilee year but that means 2025 is a jubilee year and 2024 would be the shemitah year very interesting even the roman catholics are looking at 2025 as a jubilee year who knows if they're right or wrong but it's very interesting and so that would be the final jubilee and it kind of makes sense it's in the window as we call it of 2025 to 2032 or 33 for that matter okay so what are we looking at there will be more hailstorms, crop failures. There will be four plagues coming with the fourth seal. And so when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature call out, come. And I looked and there was a pale green horse representing the, it's death. It is, first time. Uh, its rider's name was Thanatos, death. And the only horse that's given a name is the fourth horse, okay? So once again, Thanatos in the Greek, that's death. And Hades, Hades, is uh, the third reference to death, followed after him. To them, that's all, were given. So all four horses were given exousia, executive-level delegated authority over a fourth of the earth. That's two billion deaths to kill. Uh, that's the fourth deference, re death reference with uh, the Rabfeya sword, which is a supernatural sword. It's ethnic invasions in most cases by the rabbis. That's another reference to death. And then by Limo. Crop failure, sixth reference to death, death, Thanatos, he's called that, and he's also bringing death. That's a death reference. And then wild animals, which are therion, and therion could be biological warfare-sized animals of the earth. That is Revelation 6, 7 through 8. Now, people argue gay as the word, the Greek word for earth is mentioned there twice, technically, in the fourth seal. Uh, while death or killing is mentioned eight times, it's about death, people. Just deal with it, okay? So the the uh, Hebrew scriptures talk about it too in Ezekiel 14, 21 through 22. And so, uh, for here is what Adonai Elohim says, even if I inflict my four dreadful judgments on Jerusalem, sword, famine, wild animals, and plagues to eliminate both its humans and its animals, there will still be a, left a remnant in it to be brought out, including both sons and daughters. There will be a remnant as we get into the end times. That's actually me citing to the left-hand side there the, the the commentary, which is very interesting. Um, they they cite that it's probably invasion, famine, wild beasts, which would be biological warfare, and then pestilence of some sort. And we seem to be seeing that. So God's word is eternal all the way through. It reads just like Revelation 6:8. Okay, so we'll end it up with this. This is from Michael Bodea, who's a friend. 
uh, and he is the grandson of Dmitri Dudeman. Time is short, and we must be ready for what the Bible warns is coming upon the world. Pie in the sky fantasies and cotton candy dreams won't cut it. The truth of it is that the battle is coming, whether you are an individual, uh, either you're ready for it or not. It won't wait for anyone on anyone or anything, and it won't be too late, and it will be too late to do anything about it when it commences. Whether or not you are ready is important because it will be the difference between whether you stand or fall on that day. It's not something we get to do. Uh, it's not something we get to do when we get to, but something we must prioritize and focus commensurate with its importance. Thank you, Michael. We are in the birth banks, probably the fourth seal. We are si seeing signs of the sixth seal. So the fourth and the sixth seem to overlap in, in severity. Uh, tribulation comes after that. Great tribulation comes after that. 2025 is intriguing. It's more intriguing every day right now. And I think I gave you enough information to see that you need to work on you, which is we're coming up to a wedding. You can't go in naked. You can't go in with dirty garments. It's going to be one of the fall festivals, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, which is my choice, or and or uh, Sukkot of some future year. And the garments that you need to wear will have to be white and clean. So work on it. Okay. So where are we at? We are done for this session, and thank you very much for your time. God bless you, and we hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye.